Hey, I'm Adam Cook. Welcome to the Bite Britain podcast, a show dedicated to interviewing the most successful restaurant owners in the UK, learning about what goes into their incredible menus, but more importantly, what it takes to run the successful restaurant in this day and age. This week, I sit down with Joanne and Daniel, two of the three founders of Tlaloc, a new Mexican restaurant that takes the British take on Mexican food to a whole new level. Up and running for around a year at this point, these guys have gone from strength to strength by staying true to what they believe in with their menus, listening to their customers and absolutely nailing their social media. They have built a brand to be proud of. In this episode, we learn the story of Tlaloc and how three friends that work together came to join forces and take Brighton's Mexican food scene by storm. So let's get to it. So if you guys could just start by just telling us a little bit about you personally and then just sort of give us a bit of an insight into your restaurant, what the concept's all about. Okay, so my name is Joan. Um, I'm from Barcelona. Um, I moved it to Brighton uh, six years ago. And yeah, I've been working in hospitality all my life. Uh, this is Daniel. I'm Daniel, like, I'm from Mexico. <laughs> uh, I've never been working in hospitality before I came to England. Uh, but I just find it that I just love it. I just love to cook. I just love to represent like part of my culture in, in, in this country. So I just find it like funny that people uh were interested in what we have to offer mm. so i just get into really deep into like cooking into like learning how to cook properly and that's it i mean just like that's a bit of it how we how we like kind of started there so how long how long how long has been been around i feel i feel like i mean i i have to say we're missing one element of the equation here Okay. Uh, the third, the third, the third one. <laughs> Beata, yeah. Uh, so uh, she's she's the one that makes uh, all of the baking and the sweet stuff and desserts. Uh, she's just cooking now, so that's why. Oh, okay. That's the so, reason why know, she's not here. Priorities, priorities, and all that, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, she's making <laughs> this stuff <laughs> for tonight. Um, and sorry, you were saying. Uh, no, I was just wondering how long you guys have been up and running um, in, in, in Brighton and, you know, whether there's, a, you know, whether you've done it. Is this the first venture that you guys have got involved with together or have you yeah, had stuff before? I mean, we used to work, the three of us used to work together in a, in a restaurant. Um, this is, we've been going for what, like 10 months now? We started in September last year. Okay. Um, and yeah, this is definitely, both in mine and Beata's case, it's our first um our first business our first venture danny used to have a spanish uh pop-up like tapas restaurant so um he had it for only a couple of months yeah this, last summer we were running like a uh spanish bar of tapas okay. just, like for the summer a really hot summer last year yeah so it was funny but then we started uh Tlaloc and everything goes to the second so your background's always been sort of primarily in in food in the in the kind of hospitality industries then i think i think it's really good to you know a lot of the people we've spoken to for the podcast um recently have been like quite um quite well established restaurant owners and it's really good to speak to some people who are kind of in the pop up scene uh, yeah. really i guess you know at the beginning of your journey in a lot of ways um where tell me a little bit what i want to try and learn a little bit about is is like your food because i was looking on your facebook page and i was looking at some of the food you're serving up and it, it to me it really stands out as something that's a lot different in terms of the concept to what a lot of the traditional british mexican restaurants kind of serve up with your nachos your burritos you know you guys have still got some sort of some of those things i guess in, to a sense but there's so it seems to be so much more when i look at your menu i tend to look at it for a lot longer than i would most mexican restaurants because when you go to a lot of Mexican restaurants in the UK, it's like, you know what they're going to have. It's like nachos, it's burritos, it's fajitas, you know? Um, so just tell me a little bit about, the, about sort of where your inspiration for the menu actually comes from, because I find that really interesting. Well, uh, it's a tricky question. Uh, 
you almost said that what was uh, what we started doing this because all the Mexican food in in the UK tends to be like of burritos or nachos, yeah. which is which personally I don't think is wrong, but I think it's not the it's not what we really eat in Mexico. Mm. So the inspiration of this uh, menu is literally like. What I can rep- how can I represent the Mexican cuisine in England with the England English products? Of course, I need some Mexican ingredients, some Mexican chilies. Sure. But uh, how we can like make it here, make it freshest in Mexico, but with the flavors that uh, the British uh, market can mm. understand. Yeah. So basically, it's like trying to like bring a little bit of Mexico or Guadalajara, where I come from, uh, to Brighton, and I don't know. Like, I think it's just trying to change the change the game a bit, you know. Like, get enough or like burritos and tacos there, you know. They like that things that really work, and be more risky and trying to find our own idea. And yeah, so just taking more risks. I mean, yeah. What I also like is your your play on, you know sort of local produce and stuff like that which I think is really important um you know I think there's a there's a lot of um focus now on ingredients and things like that and people seem to be perhaps it's social media the internet in general people seem to be a lot more aware now of like where the food's coming from um and stuff like that so so I mean do you get where do you get your food from some kind of like local producers farmers and stuff like that or? yes I, I go almost every day with the fishmonger here in, in, in Brighton awesome He's a really like a nice guy. He's been doing that for forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And normally, just trying to get like small businesses together and trying like we could go to the wholesale and get better price. But to be honest, uh, the thing to go with him every day, and chat with him a bit, and then mm-hmm. chat about like what's in season and what could, what we could do different is make kick create like a relationship really nice that like yeah. you enjoy going and, and buy the, the product. So we're doing that with the butchers, with the fresh fruit on the open market in Brighton, and then uh, with the fishmong as well. So it's trying to like, we're a small business, so we're trying to like pull it all together. Yeah, sure. So what, tell me about, so what are some of the ingredients that are not so easy to get in the UK then that you have to get imported? <laughs> that's, that's a tricky one. Uh, um, all the dry chilies, right? Okay, and the and the masa to make the tortillas because one of the things that I think we are doing well is like doing our own tortillas from scratch. I said, did you did you do the the corn ones? Is that yeah, how you yeah. do them? the corn ones? Right? Okay, yeah. Yeah. So basically, we do everything from scratch, even the tortillas, the salsas, everything. So trying to get the right uh, uh, flour. Or getting like a nice tortilla or like a GMO free okay, uh, yeah. flowers is like it's quite difficult, it's quite expensive to be honest. But I think they always make fun of me because I always say this is but this is part of the show, you know, like if you want something good, you need to like work hard to get it. So all the chilies are like quite difficult to get nice dry chilies. It's difficult to get like a uh, nice uh masa for the tacos. I don't know, like I think it's quite like we have like a couple of uh, how's like the uh, suppliers, but we cannot buy this, the, the everything from a sim, uh, for a single supplier. We need to just, like take like a little bit from this one, a little bit from oh, the okay. other. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think all the chilies and the and. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the English and the British can't really do chilies as well as the Mexicans, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, no, no, to be honest, I think that uh, we were surprised that uh, the English market is is taking very well the 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 hot and um, the hotness on the on the food. Sometimes they eat more more spicy food than me. <laughs> so yeah, I, yeah some, I mean, yeah, the, uh, the British do like uh, do like a bit of spice. I think it's a bit of a balance. I, I've got I've got some friends that really like spice, and some friends that will 
you know, run away from, you know, the, the mildest of, of curries and things like that. So, uh, so yeah, it's quite interesting to see people's reactions sometimes when they eat saying it's a little bit too spicy. It's like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, one, one, of the, one of the things that really stood out when we were looking to find guests for the, the podcast was your social media pages and your reputation online. Um, you know, to be around for such a short period of time and have built up such a good reputation. I mean, your Facebook page looks really good. You know, you've got some great content on there and stuff like that. I mean, what, um, what, 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 do you, what does it kind of take or what's it taken you guys to kind of build that presence online and, and how, how do you kind of make time for that in your busy schedule? Because it, it seems to be kind of an important element of your business. Um, and awesome. like, what, what, what kind of things have, have you done or, or would you recommend doing for, for other people out there to, to kind of maintain and, and keep those pages going? Because it's very common. I see a lot of very well-established restaurants sometimes. They, they'll, their social media pages will be kind of just left and they might put like one post out a week and it's not very interesting. But you guys have got really cool pictures. You're like telling people about what you're doing. And I just thought that was really, really stood out. And I think that's, that's something that's really important, especially for restaurants or, or food businesses that are in the early stages. So tell me a little bit about that. So how do you guys kind of work that? I think nowadays you cannot underestimate the power of social media. I mean, from our own experience, you know, and again, we've only been a business for about 10 months, but we've noticed that nothing in terms of marketing, in terms of advertising even, um, nothing works as well as uh, social media presence. And, uh, and I, I've got to admit, me, myself, you know, I was like, I'm not a huge person on social media. I've been ignoring Facebook and Instagram for the past <laughs> probably like four or five years because I was busy doing other stuff. Uh, I, I didn't know stories were a thing when we started this. Right, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> You're going into those now, have you? <laughs> exactly. That, that's how disconnected I was. Um, and it just made me learn that nowadays, like in the beginning, we were, you know, obviously trying everything, you know, handing flyers, yeah. uh, doing promotions and discounts, talking to people. And then we just realized that um, nowadays, at least for us, it's all about word of mouth and, and social media. So obviously when we realized how important it was, we just um, asked for, for help. You know, we've, we've got a couple of friends that take really cool photos. We sometimes we just paid them with tacos in the beginning when we put in a photo. <laughs> to, to oh, that sounds like a job I can exactly, do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, it's a win-win situation, isn't it? Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I do most of the times I do the writing for the Instagram posts and uh, Facebook. Um, and, and it's just that, you know, like it, it's all about like having, if you know people who can take good photos of your food and uh, that have like probably, I, I don't have a very good sense of aesthetics when it comes to mm. that, this, this kind of stuff, but there's always someone, you know, someone you can, you know, trust to help you. And, mm. you know, sometimes you have to be a bit cheeky and just do like a little bit of an exchange of favors so that they can right. give you like good media content. And then, you know, it's all about just like, yeah, it, I guess you have to be consistent and you have to be there almost on a daily basis uh to make sure that you keep having that presence you know um but yeah it does it does pay off you know it, it that certainly um does pay off because when you get like i'm not going to say 50 50 but probably like 20 or 30 percent of the times uh some people come in for the first time um it's because they saw something on instagram you know like someone tagged me on this photo or i saw it on on this um hashtag and I, I thought to myself, I have to go to this place and try this drink or try this, these tacos, you know. So, yeah, it, it's something that certainly nowadays has to be, you know, taken care of and be, been to, it has to be paid attention to, uh, especially, yeah. I think, for a uh, small new business uh, like ourselves. Probably if you're well established. Uh, probably, I don't know, if you're Nando's or Wagamama, yeah, you don't yeah. have to take that much attention to social media. But for us, it is something oh. that we need really need yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, for your own business, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean, all you've got to do, I mean, if you just, I'm sure, if you just go and walk outside around Brighton now and just look at what everyone's doing, 
they're all doing this, aren't they? They're all just staring at their phones. They're not looking up. They're not looking. They're not even looking out for the restaurants that are walking past. They're just looking at their phones. So to not be there and to ignore it, I think is is a really big mistake that a lot of restaurant owners, you know, do make. And you know, I think it's um, you know, you talked about word of mouth, but I think really social media kind of is word of mouth now. You know, people are just telling people through social media instead of talking. You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So what I mean. What what do you think is sort of like because to even to be, to have just got to the point of launching and being as successful as you are in you know under a year I think is a really big achievement which you should be you know obviously really really proud of but what would you say was like the some of the one of the biggest factors or one of the biggest decisions that you guys have made perhaps as a team or individually that's kind of contributed to you getting to the point of success that you're at now. Is there anything you can like pinpoint? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of things. I mean, first and foremost, you know, like we had from the very beginning, from day one, we had a very clear idea of what we wanted to do um, and what things, uh, like we had a very clear vision, you know, of what we wanted to do. I think right. that obviously helped us a lot, you know. When you know which direction you have to uh, go to, you know, it's a, just a matter of like, especially with such a small team, everyone has to be pushing in the same direction, you know? Um, and that helps when all of like the three of us agree on what we want to do and, and how we want yeah. to do it. Um, so yeah, that, that helped us, you know, just like move in the same direction. Obviously in the beginning, it was a bit, you know, uh, just like uh, treading water, you know, just not being sure. <laughs> yeah, what, I, what I used to run a catering company. Yeah, I know. But, <laughs> but yeah, there was. I think there was two. I think for me, two kind of things. Um, two things that kind of like set us in the good direction. Um, first, first of all, was uh, taking better. Better was um, just an employee in the beginning. She was ah. a friend of us. Um, she's been for a few years. Uh, it was initially just me and Danny's project. And at some point, we decided to ask her if, if she wanted to be part of uh, the company and part of Tlaloc as well. And her joining us was a big, a big like a key factor for, you know, Indeed. to have someone as implied as we were. Um, obviously, someone different that brings new um, thoughts, new perspectives, new ideas to the business. And it's just like not just uh, an employee, you know, that really helped us. Yeah. I think the other thing that was very important as well is when we, after like probably like four or five months in, uh, when we were running, running out of savings, we decided to start paying ourselves a salary. <laughs> <laughs> well, you treat yourself. Because, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's for a small business um, like us, it's just very easy to fall into the bad habit um, of just like reinvesting all the money you make mm. into like trying to you know like buy more equipment or like yeah. Um, yeah. push other things like yeah again like social media or advertising or this kind of stuff you know and I think it got to the point where we were a bit stressed not not a bit very stressed because <laughs> we didn't know like how are we going to pay rent next month now that now that we've yeah run so, out yeah, of savings so you know uh -huh. So that's, that's, I think, when we realized that this, that Tlaloc could actually support all three of us, as well as keep um, surviving and, you know, evolving and growing as a business, I think that's when, uh, yeah, I think that's when we all were like, you know, we took a deep breath and was like, okay, we're not, yeah. you know, it's going well, you know. even yeah, if, I think that's an important point, actually, and I think that's a lot of business owners. I mean, I... I've sort of had a number of different ventures over the years. Some have worked, <laughs> most haven't. But uh, um, I, I, when I used to have a catering company, that was one of the big mistakes. And um, we ran it, for, me and my friend actually ran it for about four years. Um, and we didn't, we didn't pay ourselves much, really. We earned a lot of money, but we put it, we were so excited about having the business. We were just putting money back in and back in yeah. and back in. And actually, then, it's, then you start to think, well, it's not really a business if I'm not, earning any <laughs> it's it's more of a hobby <laughs> yeah i think that's a really important thing is to have your you know and most people they don't you know, finance is such a boring subject for most people 
and you know, to start <laughs> digging into all the numbers and getting the spreadsheets out, it's just like something you always want to put off. But I think that's a really important thing. And, and the other thing that you mentioned there that I thought was um, really interesting was about hiring the right people. So many restaurant owners that I've spoken to, pretty much I would say almost every single one has sort of said that, that making sure that as you grow, you hire people that you can trust, not just trust, but, but also yeah. people that uh, bring something new to your business that you can't perhaps bring to it yourself. And, and seeing those, those things in other people is a real skill, I think, for, for any, any business owner. Um, what would you say was, when you've, when you've been sitting, I mean, you kind of touched on some of the challenges, I guess, when you sort of said about getting stressed with the, you know, reinvesting too much money in the business and not paying yourself and stuff like that. Was, what's, what's been some of the other big challenges that you've faced sort of setting up and, and managing sort of the, the pop-up so far? I think probably that's like the financial side of the business is mm. what we struggle the most. Uh, and I think that's where Beata is helping us the most as well. So that's why it's, it's good that she joined us. Okay, um, so she's good at baking and good, good with money. That's two, yes. two key factors. <laughs> yes, very, very much so. Um, I mean, he likes cooking, you know, and he's great at it. Um, and I, I, Sorry, I, I called, I, I called him a she by accident there. Sorry, a he. <laughs> 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 it's I, it's I not like this is being recorded or anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I give most of like the drinks, recipes. I take care of like the front of house stuff as well as data. Um, but we are like, I had some management experience previously, but it was for a big company. So obviously, there was a head office that take, took care of like all the financial side of the business. I would send some reports and stuff like that. So I know how to do a couple of things, but mm. the big, like the most of the uh, number crunching was made yeah. by the head office. So I know how to read reports, but I've never learned how to do them myself, you know? Yeah, um, no one tells you that when you start a business, do they? No one tells you that you have to do boring stuff as well. <laughs> <laughs> you learn that later on. And it oh. sucks. <laughs> it sucks very much, but it, it is, you have to do it, you know? It's part of it. Um, I mean, we, we are now reaching out to accountants to help us out because, you know, business, again, as I said, is growing and we need help uh, to make sure that we are, um, you know, doing the numbers right and we're not messing up with HMRC, which is, no, you know. You definitely, you definitely don't want to do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> the less I can have to deal with those people, the better. I'll exactly, say. yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do what you need to do to abide by the law and... <laughs> everything yes. should be fine yeah um what what's some of the habits like one of the things i like to talk about with with um restaurant owners in particular is some of the daily habits that that you have to install in yourself um to make sure that you go out and do the best you can in your business kind of every day um what what are some of the habits that you've kind of feel like you've had to develop over the last year or so or perhaps some of the biggest habits that you would say contribute to to your success you want to talk about food or do you want to talk about my no i mean this, I, I think it's, it will sound like really cheeky but i think you have to love this profession to to enjoy it mm. and it's really a profession so it's a lot of work and the reward sometimes like can just in a, like a tiny portions so you have to be like motivated and and loved it every single day, everything. If, anyway, if if you have a bad day or whatever, once you just get into a restaurant, you have to like feel your home, your smile. You have to love the people you work with. So mm. I think, in my personal opinion, this like that's how we keep up, like trying to like get in like everything to the top. Like uh, even if I have a bad day, just get in there. And trying to not be in a dick with them, so try to like yeah. be nice to them and and enjoy it, enjoy enjoy the the service. So I think for myself, that's that's the habit I need to like. Or I'll always take like realize that I love doing this and I love to work in this in this uh, industry. So that's helps me out to like keep it up. The trying to I guess in the way of practice, not not just sort of remind yourself that. You know the reason that you're in it, but also kind of practicing gratitude for the yeah, things you're in as well, and, so, and yeah. trying to be grateful um, for the things that are, that you have got, even in those stressful 
situation. I think it's very easy when you have your own business to kind of kind of fall down and, and start to to you know lose your uh, motivation sometimes um, when things aren't going right. But I think yeah, like you say, I think that's a really good point. Is to if you if you're doing something you love, it's important to have the ability to remind yourself of that. Um, any other any other habits that you've you've got that you know you were going to say a couple of things, didn't you? Well, I mean, I think um, you just have to remind yourself that uh, every single customer is important uh, and you have to appreciate them and make them feel like they are, you know, like if you're in this because you care and you want to do things right, um, it should come out naturally. So that means, you know, that involves, you know, for Danny, making sure that everything he cooks every time is just like, it's, it's good. You know, it's, it's not good. Yeah. It's great. You know, and it all, that all applies to, uh, the drinks. It applies to the service. It applies to everything. You know, like you have to be aware that when people come to your restaurant, um, or to your business, whatever you do, um, they're spending their money, you know, which they earned by working and they, they go there in our case, because they want to have a good experience. They want to have a good time. They want to have nice food. They want to have great drinks. They want to have a good service and enjoy themselves. And maybe for a couple of hours, forget about, you know, like all the stress from work and the, like the personal, you know, like life problems. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, obviously if you, it's a very rewarding feeling when you, uh, when you feel like you're succeeding at doing that, when you feel that, yeah. you know, people leave uh, your restaurant happy and grateful, and uh, you know that that I think that's from, for for me, it's probably the biggest uh, reward, the greatest feeling of everything is that you know we are doing what we want to do, and um, we are making people, even if it's just a little bit happier, uh, for a couple of hours, you know, yeah. when they come um so yeah when when you when you have that in mind i think you know like just being focused and um having the respect and having the uh the appreciation for every single customer i think is what makes a difference and do you do you, do you try and interact with your customers a lot as well like talk to them find yeah. out how they enjoyed the food and all that kind of yeah, stuff yeah. yeah absolutely <laughs> like think, that, is <laughs> you're the one that's I think, that, <laughs> asking for feedback is such an important thing you know like even i think people it's it's easy to be scared of you know being told you know like i think this um uh, i didn't like this sauce because it was too hot i think this was too salty this wasn't like it was bland um i mean to be honest we don't have that um happening like often because i think um dan is a great chef but there's there's sometimes things go wrong and sometimes uh it's personal taste but you need to like yeah well, um, that's we, love, we love to complain i'm afraid so uh, <laughs> <laughs> so like, i mean even if even if you're ser serving you know absolutely a grade food out the kitchen every single time which i'm sure you guys are we'll still find a reason to complain <laughs> but but it's a good thing you know because that that means there's al always room for improvement you know if we were doing everything perfect that would be boring, you know. I would be bored after two days, you know. Yeah. That and you can't I, please everyone, you know. So <laughs> exactly, the worst thing you can be is like consistent in terms of like having every day the same food exactly, because mm. then the customers get bored and you get bored, and then it's just like I think if that happened ever to us, we would, you know, quit in like I was going to say a month, but probably like a week, you know, like yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, surely you have to talk to people. You have to. Uh, but again, if if you really care for what you're doing, you know, you want to hear that. If if someone thinks that a certain source, like we've been through different stages where food was hotter in terms of how much chili was in it, and then oh, okay. Danny <laughs> Danny had to cut down a little bit because obviously, you know, <laughs> it, it's it's for a Mexican person, you know, they they grow up eating chilies, you know, it's in their candies and sweets when they're kids. Um, but yeah. for us, European palates, you know, may not be <laughs> as used to eating chili uh, as they are. So yeah, at some point, you know, food was starting to get a little bit too hot. And then 
if we weren't asking people, you know, how they found food, you know, obviously yes. some people really loved the chili and really loved it when it was hotter. Um, but I think that could have been something that, you know, puts people off, you know, if you're in a, you know, if you're with friends or you, you have a couple and you want to go out for dinner, and they say, you know, like, why not, you know, why, why don't we go to Tlaloc? You know, I really liked it last time. And one of them says, oh, but the food was too hot, you know. Too spicy, that's, yeah. something, that's something that can, like, instantly change the, uh, or switch it to a different place, you know, to change it to a different decision. You have yeah. to, like, um, we have to be aware where we are and, uh, and we have to know uh, who we, we are serving food to. And same with the drinks, you know um but yeah i mean i think i think that's uh, one of the the key things um if if we hadn't had that feedback from people uh because we didn't want to listen or we just were too proud to yeah. you know admit that maybe we we were doing something wrong mm. maybe we weren't wouldn't be here now you know yeah so it's yeah. a great point and i think it's really important you know with so many um certainly People when they start food businesses, I've seen I've seen pattern in the past, and, and I've sort of done it myself as well. Um, they'll focus on that first, getting that first visit from someone, but not necessarily worry about getting them back the second time. And actually, if you if you do it right, it's actually easier to get someone to come back again, yeah, again, than it is to get them to come back the first time. And actually, if you can if you can make people see your your restaurant, your pop up as somewhere that they visit regularly. You know, each mm. customer is going to be worth so much more to, to you. You know, they're going to be worth more than that one bill that they, they paid at one time. Yeah. If you can get them to come back once a month, once every couple of months, that's, that's a huge thing. And I think the only way to do that is to, to interact with people, to make people feel like, you know, for, firstly, like you care about them and, you know, just showing that you've got that passion for your food. Mm. You know, there's nothing yeah. worse than going to a restaurant where you feel like, you know, the staff, the chef, the team don't really care. They just, they're just there to earn money. Um, that's, yeah. that's certainly a, definitely a, a, a dangerous road to be on. So that's a really interesting insight. So if you could, if you could give some advice, and I think this is a really important question for you guys, cause you're kind of quite, you know, we really at the beginning of your, your journey, what, what advice would you give to anyone that's kind of considering trying to enter the, the food restaurant pop up, sort of um industry and um, what what kind of advice would you give those people i would say do it only if you really love that you know industry if you really love to cook and to serve people otherwise it's going to be a lot of hard work <laughs> well i think it will be hard anyway right yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but if, if you like doing it you know it is yeah, it, yeah it's not it's hard, rewarding right? so, you know yeah. um if you don't, uh, I think it's it's very unlikely you'll succeed, especially nowadays. Like people, as you said before, people more and more every time they're they're aware of the quality of the ingredients and they are aware they're aware of like uh, where you source them from, how you cook them. You know, like people are getting more educated when it comes to eating in general. So I think I mean I'm not saying that you know obviously like fast food chains are always going to be suc successful, but because they have their own audience. But unless you're trying to do something like that, unless you're trying to go for a fast food chain, um, I think if you're doing something small, something, um, or even a, a like normal sized restaurant, I think you need to really, honestly, genuinely care for what you're doing. Yeah. Otherwise- yeah, It's I not all about profits, right? It's about no, actually exactly. caring about what people are gonna be eating, um, where the food comes from and stuff like that needs to take. Yeah some form of precedence over you know just numbers for example you know i think i mean as we discussed before the numbers are important you know obviously yeah, they are. if, we, if we were serving the tacos and selling them for half the price we are now we weren't we would be no, of gone, course. You know? so you have to take you know we have to give them importance but um i don't think it should be the the you know like the most important thing in a, in a hospitality business you know you have to have if you have good food if you have good drinks, if you have good service, if you create a, a cool vibe in your premises, um, if you got good interaction with customers, um, then you know it may be a, a matter of time. But 
you're going to end up at least having a good customer base. Mm -hmm. um, if then you also address the numbers and, uh, you know, make sure you're not just giving food away for free, you know, it's just a matter of time before you become a successful sure. business, I think. Yeah, that's a great, great point there. Like building, building loyal fans. You know, you're not, nece yeah. not, not necessarily everyone is going to like you. And I think a lot of, I guess another thing, a lot of restaurant owners fall into the trap of trying too hard to please everyone. But if you can yeah. just build a, a base of loyal fans that love your brand, love your food, come back again and again, you know, I think, I think that's, that is a really important point for anyone. Is Because I think, what, you know, when, when you've got something like this, such a customer facing business, like a restaurant or a food business, you know, you're going to get so many different opinions flying at you all the time. Yeah. And I think it's so it's hard sometimes to just check back in and go, right. Okay. No, this is, this is actually the food. This person didn't like my, you know, my, this dish or this thing, but actually this is what we're about. So that's fine that they don't like yeah. us. These people over here love us and we don't want to ruin it for those people. Cause we, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a very important point um, is to not fall um, victim to the, to feedback or to all the feedback. Um, yeah. Know, and and try and please everyone because you start trying to please everyone you know all of a sudden you lose your identity um, Absolutely, yes. and I think that's a really important thing that a lot of people um you know mistake when they when they first start you know food business or businesses in general really is to just mm -hmm. try and listen too hard to things it's important to obviously take feedback and you know constructive criticism and all of that stuff but you really also got to you know make sure like you said at the beginning you know, understanding what your vision is and sticking with that vision and being true to it, you know, making sure that, you know, any mistakes you make or things you can improve along the way are absolutely dealt with. But at the same time, not drifting away from that vision um, is really important about brand identity, you know, and it's about really just making sure that people understand what they're going to get from, from you when they, when they visit, you know, they don't want to come each time and perhaps get, Oh, well, they've, they've, they've switched the sauce out for something totally different or they start putting yeah. gravy on it now, <laughs> you know, so yeah, great, great advice there. I think that's a really important point. So finally, we've kind of come to the end of the interview now. So, so thanks so much for your time. But I just before we close off, I just wanted to just sort of ask, and I think it's almost even more important at the stage you, you're at with, with your business, is like, what's, what's next for Tlaloc? Can you let us into any secrets? Have you got any offers or anything, any, anything you want to share? <laughs> Where's things going? Because I'm eager to hear. Well, we, we are obviously, you know, since we started the pop-up, the um, objective in the long run is to have uh, our own, you know, our own place, our own like full-time restaurant. We don't want to be a pop-up forever. Sure. It's been a, it, it is a great way to start a business. I think if, you know, for us who, you know, we weren't never, we were never good at saving money, you know, <laughs> so, uh, no, no me. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have much money, you know, um, I think it's a good way to start a business is a w good way to like get a brand started and, you know, start building a reputation, start building a customer base. You know, it wouldn't be the same if we now, you know, somehow managed to get the money, uh, to open a restaurant, uh, we would be able to take a big part of that customer base you know um because uh, yeah, they already right. know us and i think it would be better for us you know as a restaurant if we had a you know like it's it's a bit confusing sometimes for people when they see that it's a, ca a coffee shop on the outside we try to like we have a massive a board you know but uh, i suppose that, again that's the importance of social media right because it's yeah. it, although people might not spot you walking past probably because they're staring at their phones anyway so yeah. it doesn't matter what sign you put there because they're all doing this <laughs> Uh, but yeah, using that. yeah, I mean, we are we are at the stage now of like obviously we're trying to figure out what's the best um, to grow our business. Uh, we've been offered a couple of uh, pop kitchen like franchises, um, which we were reluctant to go for uh, when we started. You know, like mm. even a couple of months in, someone already asked us. You know. And I think back then it would have been a mistake because I think the, what's great about the pop-up is that, you know, we are running it. We are the company owners. We are the employees yeah. as well, you know, and people get to meet us and they get to like get a like firsthand experience of what we're trying to do and what our vision is. Um, and they get to know us, you know, I think people really, really appreciate us. And it's a very cool thing, you know, um, which I understand because I love eating out as well. And I, if I, 
could you know have the same kind of interaction we have with people you know i know i would love to have that you know wherever i go to eat um and then obviously if if there was you know we're looking out for premises obviously it's mm. a bit difficult in brighton nowadays the prices are quite uh insane sure. yeah uh, i can imagine and to get to get funding uh for a small business like us you know can be a little bit tricky mm. um i mean it's we're just waiting for the right opportunity you know and i'm sure when it comes up we'll just chase it and uh get it you know well, I hope, yeah. to hope that maybe we can do a full up, full up interview in a year's time when you've got your new restaurant. And... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been amazing. It's, it's been so insightful to talk to you guys. So Thank I really, you. really do appreciate your time. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that anyone listening who's considering starting a food business will um, be absolutely interested in some of the, the great lessons that you, you've shared. And anyone in the Brighton area, obviously needs to come down and try your food. So what, what's the name of the cafe that you're at? Uh, the name of the cafe is Oseta Cafe. Okay, and where it's, exactly is that in Brighton? It's on the on North Road, uh, number 34. There you go. Uh, okay. And we're currently doing it from Wednesday till Saturday. After 6.30 okay, p.m., awesome. you'll find us there. So for anyone in Brighton that's listening or watching that wants Mexican food, you need to get down to Tlaloc. And what's, what's the recommended dish that you would recommend for, them, for someone to try coming to you for the first time? Well, the uh, octopus tacos are, uh, are a hit, definitely. The uh, agua chile, which is um, on the starter um, section of the menu, is a very popular dish as well. Um, agua chile is similar to like the Peruvian ceviche. Oh, so yeah, I know that very well. Yes, lovely. The, um, we change the seafood, we do it with every couple of days, depending on what the fishmonger says, it's fresh and good. So we're doing sometimes prawn, sometimes tuna, sometimes sea bass. Uh, yeah. We've done scallops as well. Um, and it's just like delicious. It's like, it's funny because probably in terms of like the preparation is one of the simplest things on the menu. And it's more, many times is what people highlight, you know, out of their meal, which is cool. Yeah. You know, I think it's something something really nice and if you're vegetarian which obviously in brighton is a huge uh deal um we got some like vegan uh mushroom quesadillas uh we got right. hibiscus flower tacos which are very interesting and delicious okay. as well um uh, and the sequil pack which is a uh on the starters uh bit uh, uh vegetarians really love it as well it's made with uh, it's a sauce kind of like a dipping sauce made with mm -hmm. roasted pumpkin seeds and veggies like tomatoes, onion, garlic. Uh, uh, wow. we, we put a jalapeno chili in there for, you know, for a bit of fun. Um, yeah. And it's kind of like a dipping sauce. It's good to share as oh, well. Say it's Mexican. Yeah, I, li I like to say it's, it's like Mexican hummus because it really upsets Danny, you know. <laughs> anything, <laughs> anything you tell That's about me, Mexican, Mexican food, Mexican right? <laughs> <laughs> anything you say, you say about Mexi Mexican food that related to any other cuisine in the world uh, <laughs> just really pisses him off and I enjoy oh, it. We won't be seeing any Mexican roast dinners or anything like that coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't made convinced him yet, but yeah, maybe Mexican someday. sausage rolls or something. <laughs> 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 but no, well, it sounds like basically in terms of your menu that people just need to try everything, really. Um, so, I mean, again, as I say, thanks, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Anyone that's Thank in Brighton that likes Mexican food, vegetarian or not, needs to get down to, uh, to Lock and try out their food. So thanks so much, guys. And uh, much. we'll speak again soon. Cheers. Cheers cool. See you soon. Thanks for listening to Bite Britain. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Bite Britain and also subscribe to us and watch the video version of this interview on YouTube so you can get updates on future releases and more importantly, exclusive opportunities to win prizes from our awesome guests.